Okay, I think I'm on here. Good, thank you all for coming out. Uh, my name is Bob Patterson. I am a strategist, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, data, IoT, and analytics. So I'm going to talk today about powering intelligent edge. This is HPE strategy and direction in the area of IoT. So, my legal compliance slide, no lawyers in the room. Okay, we're good. So here's what I got today, business drivers. I will go through this quickly. I think we all understand why we're here and what the benefit is for IoT. Um, our approach in this space, this is where I'm gonna spend the majority of my time. And my challenge here is from a strategy perspective, I'm gonna give you the big picture of all of the areas that we participate in from an IoT perspective. Okay, so there'll be several topics here that could have their own sessions that you could drill into for an hour. And the key here will be to identify the areas that are important to you, and then we'll schedule follow-up time to drill into those things. But I'm gonna give you the whole broad spectrum of where HPE participates in this space. And then I've got some use cases to talk about some success stories and things that we've done. Uh, this is informal, so if you've got questions, I'll try to take them as we go, but I'll kind of keep my eye on the clock, and if there's some things that we need to handle offline, we'll defer. So, this is what we know, right? Huge opportunity in this space, lots of overlapping environments, everything is connected, right? Uh, shortly, I'm sure your toothbrush will have an IP address, it'll be connected to the internet. Why? Because somebody wants the data, right? How often do you brush, how long do you brush, are you vertical, horizontal, or do you go in circles? And the data continues to grow, right? I think we know this so far, right? We had big data issues before, this IoT thing is breaking it wide open. And the other thing we know is there's a lot of money to be made in this space, okay? Huge opportunity. Now, I know many of us wanna make the world safer, make cities safer, have breakthroughs in healthcare, et cetera, but there's a huge opportunity in this space. And because of that, HPE has made two of our three corporate strategic pillars focused on this area, okay? The data, the applications, and the intelligent edge, part of our key strategic focus. So, no rocket science there, no surprises, I think we all get that, right? Okay, good, so let's talk about our approach in this space. The first thing I wanna do is make sure we're clear on the edge. I've heard this term get tossed around a little bit over the last couple of days, but let's make sure we're real clear here. So, the idea here the edge is where the things are, right? The edge is my oil well, it's my hospital room, it's my fire truck. And traditionally what we've done is we take data from our things and we bring them back into our IT environment, right? Your data center, your cloud, you analyze the data, you come up with the business insight, you make decisions on the things. The idea of empowering the intelligent edge is to take the compute to where the things are, okay? Take the compute to the edge. And from a business, case standpoint, the example I always use is collision detection in an automobile, okay? So if my car is collecting data, it's analyzing data, it says, oh, I think we're gonna crash. I don't necessarily want that to go back up to the cloud and then determine that there's gonna be a crash and then come back and say, hey, let's tell the brakes to stop the car, right? Because even though that latency might be measured in sub-seconds or milliseconds, I've already hit a car, okay? So real time is a relative term and there's a lot of business cases out there where you can say, hey, I need to reduce or eliminate that latency and get the compute and the analytics and the insights at the edge. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Now, when you're working with your customers and on your projects, it's real key to understand what the things are. Okay, because the things tell you where your edge is gonna be and that gives you the, the details that you need for building your solution and your use case. Um, for example, I can look at this vending machine, I can put some IT into that vending machine and collect some data from it. But that bag of chips, maybe not so much. But depending on the business case, I might wanna know where those chips actually eaten, right? If my package is recyclable, did it get recycled? Or did it end up on the ground somewhere? Okay, those are opportunities based on data that's at the edge that we wanna be able to build and collect. And when we look at the industrial internet of things, it gets even more complex, right? Because here we've got a lot of technologies, uh, we've got a lot of connectivity, different data types, and a lot of these things are siloed. They were built years and years ago with no intention of being connected to the internet or having that information forwarded, right? So as we look at these things from an HPE st standpoint, we recognize the different nuances. We've got engineers in place who are trying to understand these things so we can build them into our solutions. So let's look at how we look at this. We've got four stages to our IoT solution. Uh, we've established the things, right? The things that are out on the edge. The first thing are the sensors. Sensors, actuators, these are the things that connect to our things out there 
and pull the data off of them. And as I mentioned, when you're building applications in this space, when you're looking at the data that you want to analyze, there's some nuances out there that you have to be prepared to deal with in terms of control, data types, vendors that are already in this space. And again, a lot of these things do not interoperate because they're very, very siloed. The next step are the gateways and data acquisition. So my sensors pull the data. I've got to get that data from the sensors, package it, send it out, prepare it to be analyzed. And in this space, again, things that you need to consider from an engineering standpoint. So what's my media, right? Is it wired? Is it wireless? Uh, what are the protocols that are here? Is it secure? A lot of these things were built before security was such a major um, uh, consideration in a lot of these technologies, right? So things you need to consider in that space. As well, there are a lot of different standards across the things different standards across industries of things. So again, things that you have to try to bring together to make these things work. At HPE, we are working with one M2M, uh, who is working very diligently to try to pull these things together. Uh, we have a representative, his name is Don Brancato. Don is our representative at one M2M, keeping HPE involved in these discussions so that we can be relevant, compliant, and build solutions that match the standards. How many of you have heard of Aruba? Aruba Networking, okay, so Aruba was an acquisition not too long ago. They bring a number of devices, technologies, components, and products to the table that help us in this space, that understand the different data types, understand the different protocols, understand the different control sequences across the different types of things that we find, especially in the industrial internet. And what they can do is pull these things together in secure solutions, right? So they focus on the three A's, access, can I access the device or the data, authentication, Am I who I say I am? And authorization. If I am who I say I am, what am I uh, able to look at? Right? And they can pull all of these things, package, secure, and build them into the solutions that we need for the IoT solutions. Okay? So, we've got the sensors pulling data from the things. We've got the gateways that are taking the data off of the sensors to prepare it to be analyzed or prepare it to be moved. We're at the edge. Now comes the intelligence at the edge. Okay, now we want to bring the compute to our thing so that we can do the analysis on site. And this brings in our edge line products. How many are familiar with edge line server products? Okay, so this is one of the areas where we could drill down. I'm not going to do a product pitch, but I'm going to give you some highlights on the edge line. So what the edge line brings to the table is the capability to gather the data. Uh, it has compute on the box so I can run analytics against the data, and then I can send that data upstream or I can send it to other um, edge line boxes in my configuration. So the bottom two are simply data aggregators. They pull that data in and they'll fan it out or they'll send it upstream to your uh, data center or cloud environment. The top two have the capability to have the compute on board, and we do that with our Moonshot cartridges, okay? So the Moonshot is a server on a cartridge. I can have multiple cores, multiple CPU, I can have storage capabilities built onto the cartridge in my edge line server on the fire truck, at the oil well, in the hospital room, at the edge. Okay, so picture I can run a, a, a Hortonworks cluster, right, at the oil well, pour data into it, run analytics applications against it, get the insights that I want, and make my decisions in real time on the spot. Okay, so the difference could be avoiding destruction, Right? Or the difference could be, hey, everything's running safely. We can crank up production and maximize our profits. Okay? And that's the capability that we bring to the edge using this device. Uh, lots of uh, capabilities here from expansion standpoint. So if you want to write applications to take advantage of floating point capabilities, um, graphical processing capabilities, um, ingestion capabilities, different things that we can do in this spot in these boxes. Uh, they're hardened, they're weatherproof, and they can exist in a multiple different types of environments. Uh, PXI is one of our key uh, partners in this space in terms of writing, understanding um, the operations technology nuances that we talked about earlier, right? Control sequences, um, different types of protocols, different types of data types, different interfaces that we find in the industrial internet of things when we start looking at the different types of devices that we can connect to. But we've also got an ecosystem of partners that we're working on, working with in this space to be able to build solutions and bring them to different types of industries. Uh, one key one is FlowServe up here. And FlowServe has a really cool um, augmented reality demo that they do from pulling uh, sensor data from, from pumps. They deal with uh, water flow and pumps. If you go out to YouTube, 
and you search on HPE Discover and FlowServe, you can look at the video that shows that, um, that demonstration. It's pretty cool. So let's back up here. We've got the things, pulling data off the things, prepping that data to be analyzed. We're analyzing it on the edge, and then we've still got our traditional deep analytics, deep learning analytics environment back in your data center or back in the cloud or wherever that space may be. Okay? And so when we look at this, this is a space that we've been in for a number of years with a number of different capabilities, and I'll try to give you some highlights as we look through this quickly. So uh, we're partnering with Hortonworks uh, from a data lake standpoint. We've been partnered with SAP for a very, very long time in terms of building analytic solutions and applications there. Um, Vertica and Idle, if you're familiar with them, are still key components in this space. Now, if you've been following the news, Vertica and Idle will be spun, merged off into a separate software company, but we will continue working closely with them to build solutions um, and go to market from that standpoint. And that's one of the responsibilities that my team owns in terms of working with them to build solutions. So those are key components in this space. Um, additionally, as we talked about earlier this morning, we have the enterprise grade Hadoop. So many of us have run into scenarios where the customers either don't have the Hadoop skills in-house or perhaps they don't have the application development skills. We've packaged those things um, into this environment, working with Hortonworks, so that we have the services to, to make up their skills. We've got the support mechanisms to make sure that that environment can be managed ongoing, and that's our enterprise-grade Hadoop solution. Uh, this was also mentioned earlier, right, in terms of working with uh, BI acceleration with Hortonworks, right? We've tested, configured, optimized infrastructure for the Hive LLAP for folks who want um, accelerated SQL capabilities in their environment. And again, we're talking about analytics on, on the back end now. Um, we've been doing uh, the, the Hadoop ecosystem at scale for a while now, okay, in, in terms of the different types of solutions that we can put in. Um, HPE is very, very committed to open source. Uh, we, are, we are committers in the different projects. We've tested, um, worked with the different technologies that are out there. We've built reference architectures to these things. So we have a lot of experience in that space. Working with the Smack Stack, how many are familiar with the Smack Stack? Okay, so this is the Spark, Mesos, Akka, Cassandra, and Kafka, right? And basically, it's bringing those open source um, capabilities together into a single stack that kind of moves forward from an application development standpoint. Again, if this is something that you're not familiar with, another area that could be drilled down into, it's a little bit leading edge, but it's something that we're working on and developing with our engineers um, that we have working in this space. Multi-tenancy, we've been working across the range of different multi-tenancy capabilities, right? So if there's something that you are looking at or interested in, we've had experience in this space. Again, if this is the space you're looking at, another space that we could drill into to move, uh, to move forward on another session. Uh, and we continue to take advantage of the capabilities that allow us to separate the compute and storage from a reference architecture or Hadoop cluster implementation standpoint, right? So you can scale each one uh, independently based on your workload, right? Again, different things that we've done in this space from the back end. Uh, and this slide just kind of pulls everything together, right, from a solution standpoint. Uh, if you're on the front end of just trying to modernize the data environments that you have, or if you're trying to unify and pull those things together, if you're ready for full-scale analytics, or if you're at the point where you're ready to, to build different IoT platforms, uh, we've got it covered from, the, from, from one end to the other. Okay, we have a lot of experience in this space on the back end. So, if I look at the total picture here, right, I've got my things, I'm pulling the data in, I'm analyzing the data at the edge, depending on my use case, I'm taking the results of my edge ana uh, analysis and sending that back to my data center or my cloud, or depending on my use case, maybe I'm sending all that information back, um, but we've got that taking place. And the data flows both ways, right? So from a control standpoint, I can take the insights that I gather from the data, send that back to the things and make adjustments on the fly from a deep learning standpoint, as well as from an edge standpoint. And then we've got a couple other things we'll talk about here from security and services. I think I talked about the ecosystem a little bit. So if I turn that picture on its side, right, and look at it from a different point of view, I start with my things on the bottom, my connectivity options, my compute, control, ecosystem, and then let's talk about security and the IoT platform. So from a development standpoint, we have developed a universal IoT platform. Basically, these are all of the critical components that you need to build uh, solutions in this space from a software standpoint. And if you look at that stack, the first thing that I would notice when I looked at it is there are no products, okay? 
these are all components. There are different options here, whether they're off-the-shelf options, open source options, or depending on the use case, maybe some development work needs to be done. But these are the primary components here, right? Networking, access to data, analyze it, the things that we've already discussed. So if I put my physical components in, I've got my devices, gateways, my connectivity options, I've got my analytics across the top, and then essentially we just replicate this for the different use cases that we come in, right? So from an application standpoint, uh, or from a development standpoint, I should say, we're looking at building solutions, regardless of where they run, right? If they're gonna run at the edge, on the edge line, or if they're gonna run back in the data center, this is a model that we've put together to help move those things forward. Security, right? So we know that a lot of these things, especially from an industrial standpoint, pumps, valves, things of that nature, were not built with security in mind. And every time we connect something to the internet, we just create a huge hole in this space. Um, so we've got a, a platform from a security standpoint, and again, there's another whole hour-long presentation that drills into the capabilities here to cover all of these different spaces, right? So we've got from the edge to the endpoints, connectivity, et cetera. Now, full disclosure here, uh, I've got the Aruba from a communication standpoint, um, Voltage from data security, Fortify for application, and ArcSight is our security analytics platform. The top three will be spun off to MicroFocus along with Idle and Vertica. But still, we will maintain those relationships. Uh, we will still work with them very, very closely in developing solutions. So we'll still be able to bring all of those components and capabilities to the table when we're looking in the IoT space. All right, services standpoint. Again, full portfolio of services capabilities, from assessment, transformation, strategy, all the way up to development and implement. So if you've got a very, very complex environment, uh, or if you've got a really industry-specific environment, and you need some industry special specialties, uh, or if there's just a lack of skills, you want to move your project through a little bit faster, we can bring the skill sets to the table from a services standpoint to help move that across the life cycle of the IoT projects. Calling bull. So what we've done is we've brought together a number of reference architectures around specific solutions, and we've documented those and made those available to our partners. Okay? So I'll just pull out one example here, real-time drilling. We take the use case, um, document the requirements, the goals, the business case, and these are all from real world, real customer uh, environments. Uh, we come up with their, an RA for the functional view, okay? All the different pieces, components, parts that you need to build the solution. And like any other reference architecture, you pick and choose the pieces that you need. If there's something that you don't need, uh, you can discard that. And then we overlay the products, right? Uh, HPE products, third-party products, partner products. So you've got this cookbook that you can start from uh, when building these solutions. And right now, there are probably 15 to 20 different solutions in this cookbook. Uh, we're still developing new ones, and as we work with new customers and, and document those and put those together, um, but that is available to our partners uh, from, a, from an IoT standpoint, from a development standpoint, and from a sales model as well. Okay, we've got innovation labs. Uh, customers can travel to those labs, or most folks opt to connect remotely. All right, so if you want to do some testing um, on an edge line server, you can upload your data, upload your code, see how it runs, test the connectivity options, those different types of things. So that's a resource that is available to you all as well. Use cases. Any, any questions so far? I'm actually going faster than I anticipated. Any questions so far? Okay, good. So let's talk about some of the things that we've done in this space. Uh, Levi Stadium, this is a local one. And uh, it's, it's interesting, I, I have a local friend who has season tickets to the Niners, and I said, hey, are you using the, the IoT app that was developed for Levi Stadium? And she said, oh yeah, it works well, it's really great. And I said, yeah, HPE has developed that. And she's like, yeah, whatever, she's not a big IT person. But let's talk about the app here. This is an Aruba solution, right? So there are Aruba beacons throughout the stadium, and they can pinpoint the location um, of the cell phones uh, that interface with the application. So what that enables them to do, for example, is I can be directed to my seat, for example, okay? Uh, I can be directed to merchandising. So if I'm a Niners fan and, and I'm getting ready to, to pass a, um, a venue, I can buy some, some items, it can direct me to that. It can direct you to the nearest restroom, and it can direct you to the nearest restroom with the shortest line, 
right? So I don't know how you monetize that, but the first thing that comes to my mind is those priceless commercials, right? Getting there when I have to go, it's priceless. Um, they were able to generate an additional $2 million in revenue by being able to uh, enhance the fan experience at the stadium in terms of ordering food from your seat. Another true story, a gentleman ordered a beer, uh, he got up to go and use the restroom. The beer was delivered to him as he was going to the restroom. So maybe that's another one of those priceless examples. But it's one of the things that they've been able to do um, with the app uh, integrated with the phone at the stadium. This is about um, customer experience. Now, this could be easily transferred into the retail space, right, in terms of being able to direct me to a store, help me find items that I'm looking for, um, customer engagement, that type of standpoint, based on what it knows about what I'm shopping for, what I've searched for on the web, those types of things. So this is one of those things that can be horizontally transferred to other um, industries. City of Auckland, so this is about um, transportation and traffic congestion. So Auckland was very, very congested. Uh, issues with pedestrian safety, um, issues with traffic safety, those types of things. So the solution here was really a video analytic solution. They got 2,000 something uh, cameras around the city collecting video footage um, and analyzing that data in real time, right? So from a real time example, uh, they can use it to track or um, configure emergency services routes, right? So what's the quickest route to get my fire truck to where it needs to be based on traffic congestion, um, time of day, what my intersections look like, pedestrian traffic, those types of things. So that's one of the things that they can do from an emergency services standpoint. Uh, from a longer, deeper analytic standpoint, they're using the data that they collect to prioritize where they spend their funding from a transportation development standpoint, right? So making intersections wider, uh, making a street, a one-way street versus a two-way street, where do I put bike lanes, those types of things. So this is something that, that's ongoing uh, that seems to be working out really well in the city of Auckland. Healthcare. Uh, lots of application in the health fair space. And from an industry standpoint, one of the things they're trying to do is get, get a, away from a medical technology point of view and start looking at it more of a bigger picture business point of view, right? And, and the business here, the, the, the business return is lives, right? We're trying to save lives and uh, enhance um, people's recovery. So if you look at an internal, uh, not internal, an ICU, situation, you look at a patient situation or you look at the uh, prenatal baby care, five, six, seven different devices attached to a patient monitoring different things in front of health, right? They're dispensing medicine, they're trying to manage pain, um, they're, they're testing all of the vital signs, those types of things. Traditionally, all of that data is siloed because those machines do not interoperate and it's up to the nurses and doctors and staff to try to pull that data together and figure out what the situation is, right? So from an IoT analytics standpoint, the idea, obviously, is to pull that data together, analyze it real time on the spot, and be able to make decisions on behalf of that patient as they're needed, right? From a bigger picture standpoint across the medical industry, they're looking at taking that data across hundreds of thousands of different patients, looking for the trends, um, looking for historical analysis, all those different types of things, to be able to better diagnose the situations that they have when they come into the hospital and be able to, to treat it properly the first time. So a lot happening in, in this space, and we have a good uh, story there with Philips. Kaiser. So these folks specialize in airflow, um, air pumps, those types of things. And on the front end, this is fairly straightforward preventative maintenance type of use case, right, where they're pulling sensor information off of their infrastructure. Um, they're analyzing it for mean time between failure, trying to anticipate when something needs to be taken out of service, uh, repair it minimize the amount of, infrastructure, amount of inventory they need to carry and come up with some cost savings there. That works very, very well for them. On a bigger picture, what they are looking at is what they're calling air as a service, okay? So the idea here is that facilities and buildings like, like the convention center here, rather than them buying their own HVAC airflow equipment, managing that, um, dealing with that, Kaiser will manage that environment for them, right? Kaiser puts in, they've got equipment all over the globe, to put it in, to manage the infrastructure, 
They'll manage the maintenance, you know, get SLAs in terms of air conditioning, and I don't know what that looks like, but that's, one of, that's the business model that they're looking at, and they feel they can, they can deliver that service at a less expensive rate than the facilities are paying managing it themselves, right? So one less thing the facilities need to, uh, to look at. And that's one of the examples of the, the, the lady this morning talked about, the different market models, the different go-to-business models that you can develop in this IoT space based on being able to collect the data across different industries. Waste management, so I like this one. The garbage cans have sensors, and they can tell you when they're full or when they're not full, right? And the idea here is that um, in real time, they can optimize the routes of the garbage collection trucks uh, to not waste time in neighborhoods where the garbage cans are not full and to optimize the areas that they need to get to where they are full. So, you know, interesting from a, um, a quality of life standpoint, better supporting constituencies and municipalities, um, reducing the carbon footprint because I don't have trucks out where they don't need to be. Um, so this is, this, I thought this was an interesting one and, and, and it's very real, this is taking place right now. Ford Motor Company, fleet management. So there was talk a little bit earlier about um, the insurance companies and how they're managing the, uh, the driving patterns of individuals. And what Ford is looking at is implementing this across fleets, right? So at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, we have a sales fleet, all of those folks have um, company vehicles, and the idea is how do we minimize the expenses in that area, right? Who doesn't need a car because we have five people that are taking the same route, uh, gassing at the same station, eating at the same uh, venues, those types of things, right? Or other folks who might need to have vehicles based on their, their traffic transportation needs. So this is something that Ford is looking at implementing as part of their, um, their fleet management implementation and the services that they offer to their customers. Dubai police, this is an interesting combination of different technologies. So on the one end, they're using video technology and video analytics to capture license plates. And the reason why this is a good example is because um, in this part of the world, unlike in the US, the license plates are not as standardized. So there's different sizes, different colors, um, different languages, uh, different size fonts, those types of things. So the video analytics is very key there in recognizing the plate and being able to identify it accurately. Uh, then they combine that with other um, transportation data in terms of tolls, um, areas traveled, uh, and they combine that with um, driver registration information. And the idea is to try to figure out where the issues are, right? Stolen vehicle, uh, that this person have a warrant that are looking out for them or some other combinations of those types of things. Uh, and it says they've been able to collect uh, just over 2,700 wanted folks over an 18 month period. So that's something that they've implemented successfully, being able to use analytics at the edge, in the field, uh, and again, with a uh, positive outcome. I think that is the last one. So bob.patterson, hp.com, please write that down. Please reach out to me. Um, if you've got, if it looks like, smells like IoT big data, you'd like to move it forward, you've got some questions, we'll be happy to get involved and help you with that. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, Hold on, there's a microphone coming because I will not be able to hear you. Here's the mic. Thank you very much. Not trying to make a life harder, just honestly have this question. So I've been doing big data of all sorts and shapes for the last, whatever, 10 years and probably touched most of the components in the stack you've, you've been mentioning here. And uh, as a big data consultant, uh, going to the customers and effectively pitching the solutions like, like you guys have there, I wonder if even 80% of what you showed there works, I probably need to go and find myself another job because there is no possibly place for me in the industry anymore. So my question to you as a professional to professional, how much of this is actually working off shelf. Thank you. So without a comment or a question? Hold on, I apologize. <coughs> I'm hard of hearing and the acoustics in here are not real, real good. I apologize to the recording. Can you repeat that for me, please? Okay, the question was, how much of this that you showed, of this stack, of this beautiful, glorious picture of the future, how much of this actually work off the shelf? Okay. So because if 80% of this works, I need to find myself another job. And th there is no place for me in the industry anymore. Okay. okay. So how much of this actually works? So what's interesting in these spaces is that this is not a 
cookie cutter, off the shelf, plug some stuff in and it works, right? So what we find in this space, especially across the complexities of Hadoop, um, just implementing it from that standpoint and then implementing the applications on top of that, all of these use cases are different. Um, there are some things that are repeatable across industries, for example, from a preventative maintenance standpoint, but there's a lot of work that gets done underneath the covers, uh, understanding the different nuances for each use case, understanding the different, from an, especially from an indus, in, industrial IoT standpoint, the different devices that I'm dealing with, right? So a pump manufacturer that, that was in, in place from the 60s and I've got a factory and I'm pulling s sensor information from that, that doesn't necessarily match the infrastructure that I have at another facility that was maybe built in the 80s or built in the 90s, right? So I think there's a lot of development opportunity, which is why we have such a strong services component in this space when it comes to developing and building applications. The framework was put in place for some guidance and to make sure that we understand all of the different key communication um, um, components that are needed to make sure that something doesn't miss. If I would have put that thing up and it would have had products on it and said, you know, just order these licenses and install them, then you need to look for another job. But the fact that we have frameworks, right, and we have different um, sets of, of communications, different sets of, of connectivity options, different data types, and so many different options when building these solutions, I think they're going to be safe for a while. That, that, that's, that's my opinion. Another question. Okay, well given that, I thank you very, very much for coming out to the session. Um, wait a minute. Uh, you are encouraged to rate the session using the app. I think that's it. Thank you very, very much.